Morning all you awesome adventurers. Hope you're all having a terrific day. It's Monday, April 9th. And as you can see, there's snow on the ground. It was a cold night as predicted. Got an early start though around 7.30 and slowly making my way. I will say the one benefit about the snow today though, is at least for now, the trail is a little bit less slippery. Oh. I will admit I am really sore today. The hip is bothering me. And uh, yesterday I mentioned my knee was bothering me. That happened from one of my slips on the mud. And so, I'm uh, playing double duty today. That said, I do plan on taking it slow, but hoping to make about 17 miles. If I can do that, I can uh, get into Irwin this evening, get a bed, and take a zero tomorrow, and kind of just assess where we're at. If at 10 miles, my body's not into it. There is a shelter that I can kind of bail out on. But for all intents and purposes, it's not too bad when I'm walking, as long as I kind of keep my pace and my steps relatively normal. It's just when I stop, things start to seize up a little bit and uh, very tough getting going. Very tough, those first steps this morning, even just getting out of the sleeping bag, so. Not sure what the issue is. I was looking forward just to get to town, ice some things, and see where we're at. Not sure we'll have any views today. It's supposed to be like this pretty much all day. It's a little bit dreary, cold. Good day to just put your head down and hike though. Welcome to my hike. So I'm just going to intervene into this clip a, a little bit. This particular day on the Appalachian Trail is a pretty poignant one in my adventure, albeit not necessarily in a good way. One of the aspects when I started considering vlogging this trip and a commitment to myself and via the VU is that I would be as authentic as possible. I would give you a perspective of the good, the bad, the indifferent. And when I started putting this clip together, and there's not a lot of clips to this today's video, well, I think I captured some of the context, I really didn't get into some of those emotional nuances that I was going through. The clips themselves are a little bit more stoic than what the reality of the moment was. So as such, I'm going to do a little bit of a director's cut over today's video. Give you a little bit of color commentary as we go. Some retroactive perspective on my mind frame, perhaps. Welcome to, to my hackification. <laughs> plan for today is starting at Bald Mountain Shelter at mile 327, going to Irwin at mile 343.9 for about a 17 mile day. Lots of downhill today. We start off a little bit of a climb, but then we hit Little Bald and then start going downhill. Some views we'll hit include High Rocks uh, and then probably Spivey Gap in about the mid-morning. For Spivey Gap there is a slight climb followed by downhill for the most of the day, a little bit of ups and downs as we go and then a steep downhill going into Irwin. Not quite sure where we'll stay. Uncle Johnny's is right at the trailhead, but Irwin itself has a number of different options to stay in. So we'll figure that out. Oh, on a positive. Yesterday I was astounding about how there seemed to be no people on the trail. Well, it turns out the zombie apocalypse did not happen for the shelter did fill up last night. I think there was about 10 people in the shelter, as well as maybe five or six camping about. 
Uh, turns out I think most people just bailed out to hostels that first cold night because uh, they would have got wet the previous day and so wet and cold, not a good combination. One thing that's interesting is when I look at these clips from the morning, while I was, thought I was feeling pretty good, maybe I was had a bit of an ibuprofen buffer um, <laughs> to dull some of the pain a little bit, my hip was probably the more predominant issue. The knee I knew I had hurt the day before, but it wasn't as prevalent. But when I watch this, you can see a very profound limp in how I'm walking that wasn't apparent to me at the at the time that maybe I should have taken a bit of a closer look at. Okay, we're going some more precarious trail. Let me put you away in a sec. Here's a view. Yeah, we don't want to fall down there. That's a steep rock. High rocks, blue blaze, but again, we are shut out of views. And uh, with my current physicality, I think I will avoid the jump to the summit. I did just make the uh, shuttle, or did just make the reservation for the hotel at least which means I'm kind of committed to the next 13 miles. I have a feeling that is high rocks and the blue blade would have taken you up on top of it. Maybe next time. up in the middle of the forest. They're always so pretty. First semi view of the day. Oh, the weather's cleared out a little bit. Still overcast, but at least we can see a little bit about what's around us, which is nice. I'm about eight and a half miles in, about halfway for the day. And uh, I'm hurting. So, just a little bit of context on this clip. I I actually do think I go through kind of how I'm feeling physically a bit, but what I didn't elaborate on is literally 15 minutes before shooting this clip, I had fallen. And actually fallen isn't quite the right word because I didn't fall. My knee just gave out on me and I went down and it got twisted up under me. And I sat on that trail for the better part of 10 minutes before I could get up. And then once I got up, I was using my trekking poles almost as crutches, especially those early steps. So I knew something pretty serious was wrong. And in fact, I spent a fair bit of time thinking about, I'm not gonna get off. Anyway, I, I did hike on. So I do scratch my head a little bit as to whether it was the initial injury that hurt me, that subsequent one, or attempting to hike out on a, a bad knee. In all likelihood, it's the culmination of the three that was the recipe for not a good day. I know I talked about previously uh, the difference between sore and hurt. Well, I, uh, I think I've definitely crossed onto the hurt 
side. Every footfall, especially on my uh, right leg, just sends this pain straight down to my toes. Oh. And uh, so, so very slow today. Getting to Irwin, ice it tonight. See where I was at tomorrow. I did, uh, coming out of Spivey Gap, have the privilege though of meeting Jimmy of Appalachian Trail uh, interviews. And uh, did the, one of the quick little interviews with him. Great guy, they were doing a little bit of trail magic. But he did offer to flip me over to urgent care tomorrow if it uh, doesn't get better. Uh, offer I may absolutely take him up on. We'll see where we are tomorrow morning. So in retrospect, speaking of Jimmy, I had met him about three miles previously. And at that time, I didn't know my knee was going to be as severe as it was. But hindsight being 2020, I probably should have maybe asked him to slack pack me. That might have been a good idea. But after that second fall, and I had six, six miles, seven miles left to go forward, maybe three miles back to Spivey Gap, I did contemplate turning around. And I would say, being a through hiker, you are ingrained not to turn around and go southbound. So I'm probably biased to go forward on that respects. But I did think about it. And the reason I didn't was I had no cell service at the time. I know Jimmy would have been gone. And so I had this image of being stuck backwards at Spivey Gap with no way to get into Irwin. And so in my mind, it did make more sense to hike forward. Whether that helped or hindered or had no effect on my knee, who knows. But uh, it was something I considered, and in retrospect, maybe I would have done a bit differently. In the interim, we got eight and a half miles left to go, which should be a fairly nice day hiking with the trail and the weather. It's turning into a little bit miserable. Oh well, I guess it can't all be great. Here's a little bit of what we're here, we're walking towards. And there you can see the river as we make our way into Irwin. about two miles left till my shuttle picks me up, but I am done. It's gonna be a slow two miles and all downhill, but pretty steep, which is not conducive to my current condition. Oh well, well, we'll get there. Seeing that river going into Irwin was a bit of a, a cash 22. Typically, Got a couple miles in the end of the day, you're excited, you're gonna to get to camp, you're thinking about dinner, your destination's in sight. You just gotta kinda of get over that last little hump. This one was encouraging in that I could see the destination, but at the same time, incredibly discouraging because I didn't know how I was gonna get there. Those last two miles were bordering on impossible for me. And there were many times that I almost gave up. Not that I know what giving up would have looked like, but seeing the destination and not knowing how to reach it, it's like just grabbing that prize, but being that little bit short was more disheartening than anything else. I think that was probably reflected in my mood. Didn't bring you out much today. Wasn't much to see and I wasn't much in the mood. Oh, anyway, we'll catch you at the hotel. Okay, so let's do the wrap up for Monday, March 9th. So I'll let the wrap up primarily speak for itself, but before we get into it, I've talked previously about that feeling of pride and accomplishment when you surmount something that seems hard or impossible. Climbing those mountains 
on that grueling day out of breath not sure you can get to the top and then getting there and that joy and adulation that uh, you feel this was not the story for this day to be honest this day that mountain that injury it broke me it was not this epic man versus trail story there were times I stopped there was a way not to keep going I would have not kept going <laughs> trail beat me that day I make no bones about it yeah I got to Irwin but barely and I know people have surmounted much more and fought through much more but that is a day and afternoon I would not ever want to repeat this uh, this was not a good day by all means by any means uh, I'm gonna have to go to the urgent clinic tomorrow and get the knee checked out I managed to hike out and caught a shuttle from the trailhead um, and they brought me to the super 8 interesting those last eight miles agony on almost every step and uh, took me <laughs> a long time. It was uh, a time that I didn't actually know I was going to make it. But we got off the trail and uh, the second I stopped walking I was unable to weight bear on my, my right leg. So I've iced the knee, I've uh, We'll try now a little heat. It's uh, up and elevated. Hopefully tomorrow it'll be a little bit better. The hotel was nice enough to give me or lend me. Yeah, that's not going to be a, a good sign by any stretch. Uh, literally, I can't put any weight on my leg at all. So I'm not sure what that means for the knee. Not so sure what that means for a recovery period. I guarantee tomorrow will be a zero day and I'm assuming probably one if not two after that depending on what the diagnosis and prognosis is. Ironically everything else outside the hip which hurts a little bit but it was on the other side so I was juggling back and forth. Everything else felt great. No foot pain, no heel pain, nothing. Um, especially after those big four days. But yeah, that fall at the back end of yesterday where I wrenched that knee and I didn't think it was as big a deal last night turned out to be a pretty big deal today. So not my best day on the Appalachian Trail. Not too much exciting video for you, but this is the life of a, a through hiker, I guess. We'll keep you updated on what the, what the next steps are. On a positive, always a silver lining the super 8 hotel here has amazing Wi-Fi I am uploading videos in like two minutes flat so every video that I had to delete that was scheduled for the next seven days I'm now able to re-upload so where I think we're back on back on schedule so there's that <laughs> anyway I hope everyone's having a great night till next time icon